Good morning everyone. Today we have chosen the subject which is very current. What has been going on in America and many other nations in the name of racism, prejudice, police atrocity, police brutality, black lives matter. This kind of, you know, this kind of things which are even more horrible than COVID. Covid at least was indiscriminate. Covid did not prejudice anyone. But what has been going on today in America and many other nations against black and against other colored people and against uh, Mexicans and Chicanos and the Muslims and the these and that and the migrants and uh, immigrants and all that. Those viruses are much more detrimental, much more fatal much more lethal than any other exobiological or extrabiological virus. Today we are going to talk about every action has reciprocal reaction told by Newton in his third law that whatever we do has reciprocal reaction. If we smile, the other person is going to smile at you. American story. They say in America that America is a kind of nation which has everything big. Economy is big, people are big, buildings are big, roads and freeways and expressways are big. But problems are also big. American problems are also so big, so momentous that you will be able to find in other nations very seldom. So what has been going on in America today is all about black, white, apartheid, racism, white supremacy, prejudice, phobias. We are going to cover this very current subject today and I have chosen five different kinds of melodies that America suffers from without having any kind of remedy since the time of civil war. It has been going on. Legally, they have illegalized it. But in the mind of the American, it is not yet illegal. It is in the mind of the Americans is still institutionalized. They don't believe whatever the law says, but whatever, they, whatever their heart, their sanctum sanctorum say, they believe. Sigmund Freud, Edward Bono, Chomsky, everyone has said law and law means love and hatred. Both are innate. They're innate. You cannot wipe them out. You just cannot wipe them out. Shakespeare has beautifully said, you love some reason, some reason you hate, means you love without any kind of reason, and you loathe or hate without any kind of reason. Now, black people, what is wrong with black people that the Americans disdain them, appeal them so intensely, so tenaciously? What is wrong with Mexicans? What is wrong with female in America? What is wrong with all other colors? The KKK, Ku Klux Klan. Disdain them so desperately. There's no reason. There's no reason to love someone passionately or no reason to hate someone passionately. It is all innate. Ah, Sigmund Freud is saying it is innate. It is intrinsic. It springs from within. It is a powerful overflow, powerful feeling. It is nothing but overflow of powerful feeling. Ask it what the mono is going to say. It is innate. It is internal, not external. Ask Noam Chomsky, the polymath of the world. He is also going to tell you the same thing. He is going to support all these arguments from, Adam, from Sigmund Freud or Edward the Mornau. And they're going to say, this is incurable melody. Incurable. Because it springs from within, not without. 
So today we are going to discuss these five points. And these are the five points. Fundamentally, basically, culpable for all kinds of culpability that has been going on in America. All kinds of white, black, all kinds of Jews and Christians, all kinds of Americans and Mexicans, all kinds of Christians and Muslims, all kinds of American and the Chinese, American and the Russian, American and the Iranians, Americans and Arabs. These are the demarcation lines. These are the detrimental demarcation lines that we don't create. Nobody told us in any kind of alma meters. But these are the innate things that spring up from our within. Like I say, it's an overflow of powerful feeling. It is an overflow of powerful energy. Sometimes it's a positive energy, so we love. Sometimes it's a negative energy, so we Lord hate. Here, white and black both are equally responsible for this kind of dark energy. I would not say, and if I say, then I will be 100% wrong that black people love white people with open heart and open arm. No, that is also wrong. It's a vice versa. It is reciprocal. Absolutely positive reciprocal with only the difference that white people have two things that black people lack desperately. These two things are power and plutocracy. White people are ruling America and the white people are ruling economy. So they have power and the plutocracy. So they can impose their will and volition upon other societies, other people, other colors. Black people don't have that. Aliens in America don't have that. Mexicans and Chicanos don't have that. So they are on the receiving ends. White people are on the giving end. White people have two things, money and the power, power and the plutocracy. The blacks don't have. That is why black are considered to be victims, the prey of prejudice, prey of discrimination, prey of every single thing. And look, all the white police officers are perpetrating this kind of brutality, this kind of atrocity upon black people. Now think if the scenario would have been reversed, the black people would have concentration of power and plutocracy as much as white people have. The white people would have been the victim, white people would have been the prey, and the black people would have been perpetrating all kinds of willingness and volition, brutality, and all kinds of prejudice, all kinds of atrocity upon white people. God for me. So what do we need? We need to cleanse our conscience. We stop hating all other nations, all the 195 nations of the world must take an epitome, a leaf from the American society and they must mend their way, mend their way, amend their way, modify their way, rectify their way and stay away from the hatred. Because nothing is so detrimental, so cataclysmic as our hatred for others. Hatred grows, love grows. Sigmund Freud has said, if you love someone, then love grows. And tomorrow you're going to love more. And after tomorrow you're going to love even more. And if you hate someone, the hatred also grows. It will grow more tomorrow and even more day after tomorrow. So we have to mend ourselves. We don't have to be sentimental fool, but we have to be cerebral smart. We learn every single thing about every single thing, minutely. But we never learn anything about our emotional IQ. We call it EQ, emotional quotient. EQ we don't learn. Why do we hate someone? We never ask this question to ourselves. 
nor we ever introspect. Why do we love someone? We never introspect. We never think about it. And since love is a positive feeling, love is a positive energy, it doesn't hurt. It flourishes everything around us. So if we don't think about love, fine. Not have to think about it. Not necessary, not essential. But when we hate someone, we should go into very deep introspection and ask so many questions to ourselves. Why do we do that? Why do we have, do we have negative energy about someone? What someone has done to us? Only profile. All blacks are bad, all Jews are bad, all Christians are bad, all Arabs are bad, all Muslims are bad, all Hindus are bad. No! We are not barbaric, we don't live in a barbaric age. Then we should think about that. We should live like this. We should believe in this kind of negative energy. No, we are not living in a barbaric 13th century medieval time. But we live in 21st century. We should become deserving to 21st century. Homo sapiens. Not Homo sapiens. Not Homo erectus but homo sapiens and that is only the way we can remedy most of our maladies physical maladies, biological maladies, neurological maladies, cerebral maladies, visceral maladies, sentimental maladies, emotive maladies. Human is Ashraful Makhlukat. Ashraful Makhlukat in Arabic means we are the best of the best of the best creation of God's creation. That means we are able, capable, and viable of everything. Everything great and good is born. We are able, capable, and viable to destruct everything around us. And we are able, capable, and viable to construct everything around us. We can unleash we can unleash all the positive force of energy and we can create every single thing around us and we can also unleash negative force of energy destruct everything around us God has said I have made you Ashraful Makhlukat best of the best breed living form on this Terra Madre. Palm is in your palm. Victory is in your hand. So is vanquish. Victory and the vanquish both are in our hand. You destroy. God is not going to ask you any question why you destroy. If you construct, God is not going to ask you any question why you construct. So, life is what? Great as well as godly. You can condemn things or you can condone things. It's all up to us because we are an ultimate force, an ultimate force. So we are going to talk about these five topics. Now we are going to elaborate these five fundamental melodies that America suffers from. First is racism. Whatever we see today in America has been going on currently as we speak is all the consequence of racism. Blacks hating whites, whites hating black, Christian hating Jews, vice versa. Americans are hating Chinese, Chinese hating Americans, Americans hating Russians and vice versa. So this kind of racism, we don't actually accept the person on the face value. We never say you are black, so what? It doesn't make any difference to my thinking if you are Muslim or Hindu, so what? It doesn't make any difference to my rumination, to my beliefs, to my understanding. We never say that. But you always say, with our twisted nose, that he is black and he is white and he is Christian and he is Muslim and he is Jew and he is in no, that is how everything starts. That is why Socrates has, I mean, sorry, Shakespeare has said, with love, some reason, 
color of God apply to you. We love someone without any kind of reason. And some reason we hate. And we hate someone without a reason. We don't have any reason to love anyone, nor we have any reason to hate anyone. But it is our innate feeling, innate reaction. It is our overflow of powerful, negative feelings, so we hate, positive feelings, so we love. Pheromone also play a role. If we like some people because the same pheromone we share, if we hate someone, we don't share the same kind of pheromone in science. But here in America, it's a more social racism rather than scientific pheromone thing. Number two is white supremacy. KKK or Ku Klux Klan. There was a Ku Klux Klan, overt Ku Klux Klan, open Ku Klux Klan. These people were taking procession out of the street of America and openly hating black people and hating Jews even, white Jews. All the aliens, all the migrants, all the immigrants they used to hate. Then KKK become illegal, illegitimate organization. So now they don't carry out their philosophy or their thinking, their doctrines, their principles openly or overtly, but covertly, hushly, casually, chupiri, they, they carry out, still they, these people are KKK people, they are white supremacists, means they always maintain, always believe, they have a very profound belief in one thing, the white people in the world are the supreme race. They are alpha race, they are alpha, they are beta race, and all other people are gamma, delta, and epsilon race. As narrated by Dr. Hutchter in his book titled The Brave New World, written in 1932. That is America today. Whites are alpha, all other are Delta and Epsilon, that kind of white supremacy, which is Alpha and Beta, white Alpha and Beta, all color folks are all Delta and Epsilon, according to Huxter. We are going to move to point number three, which is also culpable for this culpability and this massacre has been going on in a great nation like America is apartheid. Apartheid means color discrimination. You discriminate the brown people, you discriminate the yellow people, you discriminate black because you are white. And other people are going to discriminate against you because you are white. This is apartheid. This apartheid was wiped out, partially wiped out, socially wiped out and judicially wiped out, statutorily wiped out, constitutionally wiped out from the American society, but nobody could wipe out from the psyche of Americans. It still lives, it still ticks, and it still thrives, and it still teems in the minds of all the Americans. In 1960s, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. tried to wipe out that thing and he said, I have a dream that, <clears throat> that my children will be judged by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. And he was murdered. What he said, I want to see the kind of American with my children will grow. My children will be nurtured and not according to the color of their skin but the, but the content of their character. You hate the people. You definitely hate the people. He is a criminal. He is anti-social, anti-religious, anti-national. Yes, but just because he is black, 
Just because he's brown, just because he's Jew, just because he's Muslim, just because he's Hindu, just because he's Jain or any other community that does not give us any kind of right or privilege to disdain, despise or hate. But despite the light was sacrificed on the altar by Martin Luther King and John F. Kennedy. In 1960, but nothing happened, not even a dance, not even a dance. For this prejudice and discrimination, prejudice and discrimination, prejudice and, prejudice and discrimination has two facets, two sides of the coin, flip side of the coin. If I prejudice or discriminate someone, that undoubtedly someone is going to discriminate against me, prejudice against me. That is what they say, what goes around comes around. If you behave someone nicely, politely, kindly, the other person is also going to reciprocate. He's going to behave nicely, politely and kindly. But if you are going to behave barbarically, if you are going to behave rudely, you don't expect that the person is going to love you, that person is going to respect you, that person is going to venerate you or give you a standing ovation. You have to be totally idiotic to believe in that kind of negative philosophy. That is what is going on in America. Black people are not venerated, respected by whites. So whites don't get any kind of respect from blacks, vice versa or Newton's third law, which says every action has reciprocal reaction. If we smile, other person are going to smile at us. If we bail mouth to someone, someone is going to bail mouth to us. If we are going to use viruperative to someone, someone is going to use viruperative to us. So this is a prejudice. Fifth thing that American so the problem is xenophobia, chromophobia, aprophobia, and Islamophobia. I have spent 20 years, 20 long years in America, brushing the shoulders with Americans, working in a company, knowing America inside out and outside in, and I can recognize, I can understand, I can feel and I can speak, I can elaborate America, about American society like I know the back of my hand. Americans are very phobic. Very phobic. They don't, most of the time, they don't hate black. But they're scared of black. Most of the time, they don't hate Chicanos. But they're scared. Most of the time, they don't hate Muslims. But they're scared. Most of the time, they have this Chromophobia, phobia of colored people, because they are scared of them. And most of the time they have they have this acrophobia. Acrophobia. Because they are afraid of poverty. What will happen if I'm poor? Whatever what happens if I don't have enough food in my belly? What happens if I don't have a roof over my head? What happens if I don't have ample amount of clothes and quality clothes on my body? They're always phobic people. They don't enjoy life. They don't let themselves go. And think about tomorrow, tomorrow. But they're always phobic. They, are, they look at the black people, they get scared. They look at the white people, they get scared. They look at the other people, they get scared. They look at the Chicano, they get scared. They don't like any other, any other faces then their own white people, white breed. And that is the phobia against black, phobia against migrants, phobia against immigrants, phobia of other people, phobia of Chinese and Russian people. And those phobia actually drive their life. Phobias actually drive their thoughts, their ideas. So, xenophobia, phobia of, phobia of strange people, alien people, immigrant people, migrant people, phobia of 
chromophobia, color, black people, yellow people, brown people, green, and other like that, acrophobia, poverty. They are very much phobic about poverty. They don't want to be poor. And Islamophobia. They're scared of Muslims. They're scared of Islam. So whatever you are afraid of, you are going to hate it, even hurt it. We all are scared of dog. So we always pick up a rock and throw it at the dog. Because we are scared. We are not scared of cow. We don't do that. We are scared of snake. As soon as we see the snake, we run after it with the bamboos and we try to kill it. Snake doesn't have any kind of intention to kill us, it's still we kill it because we are scared. So whatever we human are scared, we try to eliminate that particular entity to assure our security. So these are the five remedy, sorry, melodies of American society that American will never find melody because they are begotten in their cerebral faculty, in their visceral faculties, and they are, uh, they are totally unable, totally insecure, totally without clue how to improve themselves. Thank you very much for listening and watching. I'm going to talk to you tomorrow, after tomorrow again about some other subject. God bless you.